this is a limited edition film stock by Yashika. Before encountering this film, I only knew of Yashika cameras, I didn't know they also had a couple film stocks. And so, pleasantly surprised when I found it, I of course had to buy it to try it out. I mean, apparently it's a limited edition, so am I lucky to have caught one? I don't know. Anyway, in this video I'm taking you with me on a sunny winter morning when I tried out this special film stock. This film stock is one of the few that I bought in Japan when I found a multitude of interesting films I had never heard of. So far on the channel we have covered Cyberpunk 640T, Sora 200, and of the three remaining films it's Yashka Golden 80's turn today. And just like with Sora 200, I didn't really do any research beforehand because I wanted to embrace the surprise. By the way, the 80s is just the name, not the ISO. This is sold as ISO 400 film. And that's about as much info I had when shooting. One morning, I simply came into the city centre to begin my walk here and head outward and uphill. Once I came to this little street on the side, I spotted the first photograph I wanted to shoot. This was sometime around Christmas when Innsbruck had their Christmas market going on and a lot of decoration in the city. Something I saw for the first time however on this day were these giant humanoid figures, and so I thought this street with the figures and the people that had a sense of scale could make a cool first photograph. Here's the result, and I really like this start. I enjoy how the composition is balanced thanks to the person on the right adding some weight to that part of the frame. Otherwise, it's a simple, lively photo with a lot to look at. A decent start, I think. After wandering around the centre for some more time without any success, I came out here to head to a park that I wanted to check out. It was here that I spotted this person crossing the patch of grass with a dog, and I thought that might be a nice photo opportunity. I was thinking that maybe I could even get them to walk in that sliver of sunlight. Here's the result, and unfortunately this one didn't really work out. It appears quite messy. The idea with the sunlight sort of half worked. The person is in the sun, but the dog sadly isn't, and it just doesn't quite have the effect I was hoping for. But even if it had worked, I don't think it would greatly elevate the quality of this photograph, because the composition just overall feels a bit messy. Not that the framing itself is purely at fault, I also think I just wrongly chose to photograph this scene here. Also, those bottles at the bottom kind of annoy me. Here, I was thinking that it'd be really cool to get a photo of these two busy working, but my confidence hadn't quite woken up yet at that time of the day, and so I ended up being a bit too scared to frame up a shot and shoot. I thought I might as well include the video clips of me wandering around though because I've received many comments from you asking for tips for shyness in street photography and well, as you just saw, it's something that stops me too, so I don't really know. I had entered this park and saw a lot of potential here but didn't quite find the right composition yet until I spotted that house from this angle. I really liked how the house was framed by the trees and so I decided to get the shot. Here's the result, and I really like this one. The composition worked out wonderfully in my opinion, the tree in the foreground also just helps a lot to add some depth to the photograph and fill in the foreground a bit. I love the calmness of the scene that just pictures a cold sunny morning in the park as the city around wakes up. Then, while crossing the field here, I saw that the two people walking their dog were about to enter a nice frame and so I hurried to find a position. I tried to keep the sun behind the right tree to not get too much of a flare. This is the outcome, and I think this is pretty neat. I love the diversity in trees here that add a lot of interesting bits to the composition without making it look too messy thanks to the gap in the middle which builds the frame in which the main subjects are walking. However, they sadly ended up a bit too small I find which gives them too little significance in the composition. Nevertheless, I do enjoy the photo, also because, I mean, the lighting, it's so pretty. <laughs> 
This shot didn't turn out that nicely, sadly. I was eager to get a shot of the person with the buggy framed in between the trees here, but somehow it didn't really work well. I think it's mostly due to the lighting. On the lookout for more interesting photographs, I kept wandering around this road because I felt like there was something to be had here, but I hadn't found it yet. Eventually, I decided to shoot a simple straight photograph of the road in a moment when there was a little bit of action. Here's the result, and I'm feeling mixed here. The composition works, the lighting is pretty, and we have some action which I all appreciate. I like how when you look closer you can spot the nun who just dropped something off in the bin, the person on the bicycle with the red jacket, and lastly someone a bit further behind on the left who I think was walking their dog. So when viewed in detail I think this shot is actually quite interesting, however when I zoom out and just look at it as a whole it seems a tad bit boring, so I'm not sure about this one, I suppose I'll have to give it some time. Then I spotted an opportunity to my left where the nun was sweeping the ground in front of the church. This is what I shot and I'm really fond of this. I think it works thanks to the symmetry, however I love that little bit of imbalance caused by the nun on the right with her shade hitting the wall. Just makes for a cool looking scene I find. Here I shot this scene in front of me on the street as this person in red was approaching me. The photo isn't anything outstanding, but I think it's about time that we discuss the film. So Yashka Golden 80s it is, so far it doesn't seem too funky in any way, warm saturated photos is what I'm getting here. Something I've noticed is that it doesn't have an awful lot of dynamic range. Shadows often turn black quite quickly and overall the film seems to be quite contrasty. I'm guessing this is some rebranded film, not their own emulsion, however it's clearly not one of those Kodak Vision motion picture films without the Remjet layer because the photos don't feature the typical halations you'd get like we saw with Sora 200. So just guessing by the looks and by the fact that this role was a 400 ISO film with 24 frames, I'd say this might be repackaged Kodak Ultramax 400. This is just a wild guess of mine based on the little info that I have and the results that I can see. While scanning, the photos seemed a bit less contrasty than the Ultramax I'm used to, but that might just be my faulty memory. Alternatively, it might be Fuji Superior, but I doubt that Fuji is a great source for repackaging, and the look I get here does closely resemble what I'm used to from Kodak. Anyway, enough speculation, let's continue shooting. Then, before we continue, I want to thank the beloved continued sponsor of the channel, Squarespace. Squarespace is a wonderful all-in-one website platform that I've been using for my website for nearly four years now. That is where I present the different projects I've worked on or am currently working on, ranging from short films to photography projects. So here you can look through my work with a little thumbnail and then click see more if you want to see the details where I've either placed the finished work or it says something like in post-production. What I personally love about Squarespace is their interface, which is really simple and easy to understand so that someone like me who wants to present their work online and doesn't need a super complex website can easily build it myself. You can start off with one of the many templates and then customize those to fit your own needs and taste. Head to squarespace.com for a 14 day free trial and then when you're ready to launch your website you can go to squarespace.com slash Theo Crawford to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Thank you so much to Squarespace for continuously supporting me and my work here, I really appreciate it. Radio on gravel, he would drive real slow. He 
Here, I looked back at the bridge, spotted a scene, and immediately decided that this is a scene worth capturing. Here's the result, and I really like it. I find the scene interesting somehow. I like how the light is blocked on one side of the frame so that the other side that is lit up gets all the attention and that is where the main subject is, who seems to be gazing into the distance, wondering where they should go. I like the scene and I'm happy that I was able to capture it. Here, I was just passing by a barber's studio where this guy, who might be the owner, was on the phone at the front door. This time I was feeling brave and so I decided to take a shot of the scene with the barber in it. Here's the result and I'm really happy with it. I love the lucky moment I caught just as the barber was checking on me, looking straight at the camera while being in the midst of a phone call with his hand up and in motion as he puts emphasis on his words. The rest of the scene is okay. I kind of wish there'd be more going on, but I'm happy with the photo anyway. to a part of Innsbruck with narrow roads and on the way I had shot a couple photos which all I think are fine but nothing special. This one is quite nice I think with the framing in between the buildings and the mountain at the back. I walked further and came to a quieter area where I spotted another moment worth shooting. I really like how this one turned out, the buildings are again acting as a decent frame and I like the background with the church and the tree, there's just a lot to look at which I appreciate in this scene. What tops it off of course is the life that is added to the photograph thanks to the person in the middle. If I could wish for anything, I'd wish for them to be a bit closer to the camera and not so stuck to the bush, but I still enjoy this a lot anyway. Then, after exploring many different corners and spotting a lot of cool things but nothing that I felt like actually shooting, my GoPro's battery died and while I was switching batteries a scene happened to develop in front of me and so I shot this here off cam, which I'm quite happy with. Unfortunately, I only got the person's back but I still appreciate how they add a sense of life to the scene that I wanted to photograph anyway but was hesitant because it was missing that sign of life, which now was added. Then I continued to explore and found this cute little path that went up through a bunch of houses. It was a really cute area, however it was tough to find anything specific that could be framed in a photograph. Eventually I passed a parking area with two people changing their car's tyre which I decided to incorporate in a wide shot of the path. 
Here's the result, and I think it's alright. In theory the photograph is sound, however in actuality it doesn't feel quite right. What I mean by in theory is that I can count up many things that speak for it. The lighting is nice, the composition is effective with the leading lines and framing and the subjects being a neat addition to the photo. Also, I love that the backdrop features the mountain. However, when I actually look at the shot, it just doesn't feel quite right. I think I might have framed it too far to the left, including too much of the messy corner on the left side of the frame. I think if I had stepped half a step forwards and framed the shot more to the right, with less of the house on the left but a stronger focus on the two working on their car, this shot could have been much better. But that's for another day, I guess. Then I made my way up the road all the way to the end of the houses where the road transitions into a forest. And there I decided to turn around and head back down. I still had a couple shots left on the roll so I kept my eyes alert and caught this scene on the way. Nothing special, I like the slice of life character this shot has but it's also just a tad bit boring. This one is pretty interesting I find. I love how the subject just entered the light here and balances out the composition. Finally, when I was back down in town, I attempted two shots of this framing situation here, but neither really worked out I find. This one is alright, but the buggy that is only just entering the stage I find a little distracting. Anyway, that concludes this morning's shoot and my session with the limited edition Yashika Golden 80s film. It was certainly fun trying this out and I'm overall quite happy with the results of the morning. The film itself doesn't seem to be anything extraordinary. As said, my best guess is that it's repackaged Kodak Ultramax, but who knows? If you know or have any other guesses, please do leave a comment. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Before saying goodbye, I would like to give a warm thank you to the lovely people supporting me on Patreon. Thank you to each and every one of you. If you're interested in Lightroom presets, tutorials or postcards, you can check out my page via the link in the description. Also, I have a print shop by the way, in case that is of interest to you, also in the description. With that said, I hope to see you again soon. Until then, goodbye.